Don't throw them out. You'd be surprised what you can make with these. Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome along everyone. Now, when I was at UKS the other weekend, I was watching one of the public demos. Then all of a sudden I heard this voice. Hello Paul, I've been looking for you. And it was Barry, one of my subscribers. And we went out to his car and this lot is some of the wood he gave me. Now, this is very clean compared to what it was like. And it was slightly bigger. I've basically planed all this down to 11 mil square. So it's pretty thin and some of it is very bent. It's twisted, but I think I can make something out of it. For this project, I've also just ordered a new saw blade for my table saw because I wanted something to cut a bit finer for the smaller pieces. So I'm gonna put this on time-lapse now and watch to see what I get up to. Quick change into the new saw blade. Then on with my segmented jig. After I've measured out the first cut, I'm remeasuring it again. I'm really trying to get these pieces as accurate as possible to the 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15, and 16 mils that I want. Once I'm happy with the measurement, it's just a case of cutting all the segments. I need 12 segments per ring here, and I'm actually cutting a spare three, just to cover for any extra tear out. Once all the pieces are cut, it's that bit we all love, all the sanding. Every single piece here has to be sanded on all six sides. It doesn't take too long for each piece, but when you've got nearly 100 pieces, it does take quite a bit of time. Once all the sanding's done, I decided to put some shell out on each of the ends, which this provided to be a waste of time in the end. Because the shallot had spilled over to the top and bottom, it was then a case of re-sanding all the tops and bottoms again. Finally, get onto the lathe, and here I've got a piece of oak board which I've just hot glued to a waste block. This piece of oak is actually going to be the top and the bottom for the piece that I'm making. Because part of this is going to be the top, which is actually just going to be a, a ring on the top, I need to make sure that it's as flat as possible. I'm using a small mortar to hold it onto the jaws. Uh, this really does cause me problems in the long run. As all the individual segments need to be glued to this base, I need to make sure it's as flat as possible. Once I'm happy with the base, I then put on my new indexing system. You'll notice here that I'm actually using a 72 hole wheel. Had to make this one up, especially for this particular build. When I made this disc, I decided I would use two five and a half mil sheets of ply. I drilled the holes through both of them to start with. The front disc has the hole which will just fit over the spindle, whereas the back disc has a, a bigger hole so it doesn't actually touch the spindle. This means that I've got thickness for the nail to go through just to reduce any movement, but it's just still tightly onto the spindle. Gluing the pieces on is a really, really quick job. Just hold them in place for 15 seconds, and then you can move on to the next one. Once the whole ring is done, leave them for 15 minutes, and they're ready to do whatever you like. To make sure each level is as flat as possible, first of all I'm covering it in chalk, then using a sanding disc to sand it down. And the reason for the chalk is, is that if you see any chalk left, then you know you haven't sanded everything fully flat. Before I start each level, I'm measuring the segments. Based on the size of the segment piece, I then check on my phone with a formula to see what diameter each ring should be at. 
And the reason I've done this is because I'm working on the basis that each piece is 70% of the size of what it should be to make a full segment. So therefore, the, every gap will be quite uniform as it goes through the whole piece. When all the layers are glued on, I then finally do all the finish shaping inside. Then I glue on the oak ring. It's the oak ring which really, really did cause me problems. Using my 9mm Ashley R spindle gauge that I've just recently bought, it's got a really, really acute angle on it and I think that is probably the reason why I probably wasn't riding the bevel properly and it just dug right into the wood. I think in all, I had five catches on this piece, it flew off the lathe every single time. The only damage to this was actually on the base. Working on the outside, once got that lip sorted out, the 12mm spindle gouge worked a lot better. Sanding wise, what I've found is that you need to keep the speed up fairly high. If you have the lathe speed too slow with sanding, what you're going to find is that you're going to start sanding at the edges of the pieces rather than making the, thing, the whole thing as smooth as possible. There were odd little bits of tear out in all, of, all the sections. The lip itself was the worst piece out of the lot. As you went through each of the grits, if you tore off a thin strip of the paper, you could actually use that to go through all the holes. Finishing wise I decided on shellac, uh, just thought it was just a quick and easy finish that you could just basically wipe on, let it dry. So from these scraps to this and that is what I had visioned the moment that Barry shoe these to me. Uh, finials, no, <laughs> that was the original plan and I've got to say I have thoroughly enjoyed every part of this. Even, I mean, I don't know whether it shows in the video or not, it, I think it threw off a lathe probably about three times and not one little bit of damage. And quite interesting actually is because it was, it, I didn't actually start getting catches until I started uh, trying to shape this top ring. And I think the reason was it was my new Ashley Isles 9mm spindle gouge and I've got such an acute angle on there that I don't think I was probably riding the bevels properly and it just literally just dug straight into the wood because you could see big gouges where I actually got a catch and obviously with that I mean there was such a small mortise on the bottom uh, I mean we're only talking about probably two three mil that was being held in by the jaws and therefore it just had no chance and it threw off the lathe every time and because each time you've done that it's it damaged the bottom so that's why i ended up having to part the bottom off and i'm quite pleased actually because i think this does look a lot better with the thinner bottom and i'm going to give a shout out again for earl of earl's small segment shop um links will be below please please do go and visit him when i initially did this that i actually gave these ends a small coating of shellac to start with and i was hoping that I was that was going to be it for finishing them off but what i found was was that when i actually did apply a coat of shellac to the outside and inside that these end pieces really just stuck out like a sore thumb and what i had to do was in the end i found the easiest way was just to get a small paintbrush and just dab bits around there just to finish the whole thing off properly now when i did this i mean from a previous previous project video i'd only got my 60 point ring so the first thing was after i cut all the pieces i realized that my 60 ring was just going to be no good so i quickly went off and made a 72 ring which is at five degrees per point I've done this one slightly different to this one. This one I think was out of 9mm ply. This one is actually two sheets of 5.5mm ply. And I wanted the thickness because when you put your nail in, it will just cut down on the least 
amount of movement but because I didn't want the full thickness of this right behind the chuck the second ring you'll see there as I've actually done a bigger hole so that it's only the first five and a half mil that sits on the spindle right behind the, the actual chuck and that meant that I could actually tighten the chuck up up properly to spin it up the other thing you'll notice as well was the table that I was using there and as you can see there it's just straightforward piece of ply there for where it slots between the the, the lay bedways this piece of wood here again has to be a similar size or, or thinner to drop through the bedways once it's through there you can twist it and I've just got a simple wing nut on there this original table was when I created my first sand and disc as this table was already more or less at the height of the center spindle so this in combination with this was really in replacement of not having a proper sanding disc I've actually just used a thin piece of 3.2 mil ply made sure it's totally square with the table so that when this butts up to your work that it is fully square there and I've used a very very easy way of a clamping system I've made sure that this point here is at the center of your spindle so that every time you could actually just measure across there for where you want a stopper to put your work on the very very first ring I did on this the gaps were so so small that when I got down into the putting the last piece of wood on this was just too thick to put on and I then had to use a steel rule just to literally just rest my piece on just to push it in place but when I got to each of the rings above the gap was enough that the work wouldn't hit the bottom of this for when I put the final piece on and it worked absolutely brilliantly now I think the best option there would be to have some form of a metal plate which is maybe only one millimeter thick the main thing is you just do not want too much play and it's a very very quick and easy clamp for altering this and it works absolutely brilliant I have really thoroughly enjoyed this and hopefully there will be several more projects to follow for similar types of thing. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you on the next project video.